Welcome to the Recommended Daily Value Podcast, your daily dose into the health and wellness world. Welcome back to the Recommended Daily Value Podcast, where we dive into everything health, fitness, and nutrition related five days a week in five minutes or less. This podcast is brought to you by Umzu, and I'm your host, Tyler Woodward. We are now on day three of the guide to boosting your testosterone. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next couple episodes. Last episode, we discussed some of the natural nutritive factors in foods that may be impeding your testosterone production. So today, we'll be focusing on many of the environmental toxins that we're being exposed to that can also impede testosterone production. If you are interested in diving deep into these, I highly recommend Anthony G. J.'s book, Estrogen Generation, as he covers basically all of these in real depth. First up, we got BPA. BPA stands for bisphenol A, and it's commonly used as an additive in plastic in order to make the plastic softer. And it's sometimes used to also help waterproof various materials. BPA is a potent estrogenic, and it's sadly found pretty much everywhere today. You can even find it in receipt paper. And I quote, in 2010, EWG commissioned tests of thermal paper and found the amount of BPA on a receipt is 250 to 1,000 times greater than that found in a BPA-based food can lining. Pretty wild. Sounds kind of ridiculous, but I pretty avidly avoid touching receipt paper. BPA is also commonly found in canned goods, water bottles, soda cans, plastic and paper cups, plastic wrap, in addition to plastic utensils. Even if your insert product claims to be BPA-free, it's very possible that it contains various derivatives of BPA, including BPS, BPF, BPZ, the list goes on. The, these are all chemical cousins of BPA that are largely untested in terms of their effects on humans, but, I suggest not being, but I'd suggest not being part of the trial group. Carrying on with the plastic theme, we've got phthalates. Phthalates are another chemical used to make plastic softer and more malleable. According to the CDC, phthalates are often found in vinyl flooring, lubricating oils, personal care products, including soaps, shampoos, and hairspray. They're also used in polyvinyl chloride, so they're found in PVC pipes, food containers, certain electronics, shower curtains, and car interiors. Again, the list pretty much goes on forever. Next, we cannot forget about parabens. Parabens are like the cosmetic or beauty plastic. They're most commonly found in makeup, moisturizers, hair care products, sunblock, soaps, shampoos, and deodorants. For some reason, various parabens are also being added to certain processed foods. This may be a result of their preservative effects, but quite frankly, I'm not exactly sure why, and it's still frightening nonetheless. Moral of the story is to avoid plastics pretty much at all costs. Whenever possible, I try to buy non-synthetic materials, whether it's for your car interior, couch, or clothing. Invest in a solid, metal, reusable water bottle, glass Tupperware, and metal utensils. Now to food. First up, we've got the Gatorade estrogens, as I'm calling them. Many of the synthetic food colorings used in drinks like Gatorade, Powerade, and whatever other processed food uses dyes are very estrogenic. Yellow number 5 and 6, red 2, 3, 10, and 40 are some of the most commonly used ones known to have estrogenic effects. Anecdotally, I actually had a childhood friend that was hospitalized, and the only conclusion the doctors could come up with was that she had consumed too much Gatorade, which I would presume was from these dyes. Unsurprisingly, many of these compounds are banned across the European Union for their known detrimental effects. Speaking of compounds banned across the EU, we've got atrazine. Atrazine is one of the most commonly used herbicides across the US that's been banned in the EU since 2003. Again, another potent estrogenic compound that may interfere with reproduction and development in addition to potentially being carcinogenic. Other estrogenic chemicals that we need to watch out for are triclosans and alkylphenols. These are commonly found in soaps and other cleaning products. Artificial fragrances and essential oils are other culprits that often go hand-in-hand hand with these. Benzophenones and octocrylene are two other chemicals found in sunblocks known to exert estrogenic effects and potentially be carcinogenic. Last but certainly not least, we've got birth control. Birth control is obviously an estrogen, but it's so ubiquitous in our environment today that it's frequently found in our water supply, and birth control passes through most filters. So even if you're filtering your drinking water, these chemicals can leach through our skin, being absorbed topically. Now that I've been the bearer of bad news, let's get to some actionable steps you can take to mitigate exposure to all these chemicals. Number one, filter your water. My personal recommendation is the AquaTrue Reverse Osmosis Filter, not sponsored by them or anything, with the remineralization option, so you're still getting some minerals in your water, which is really important. The Reverse Osmosis is, in my opinion, the highest quality water you can get, but you can also go to a water store and purchase Reverse Osmotor water from them for really cheap. Other solid water filters that you can get in your house are Berkey and Pristine Hydro, but I'm sure there are others as well. I also personally use the Pristine Hydro Shower Filter if you want to go to that extreme level. Number two, buy organic. Purchasing organic foods minimizes your exposure to some of the many toxic chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis. This includes pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, etc., all these things that are used to make industrial-scale food. 
This also includes buying high quality beauty products, deodorant, lotion, sunblock, etc. Look for brands that intentionally avoid putting any toxins into their products. Personally, I always try to opt for natural alternatives like coconut oil or olive oil for sunblocks or lotions, but brands like Thrive and Cosmo Beauty or Fatstick are all make very solid products. Well, that's it for this episode, so make sure to tune in tomorrow for a supplement device for boosting your testosterone. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button and to share it with a friend. And remember, these opinions are my own, based on my own research and experiences, and is not medical advice. Till next time, be good.